Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Uh, I'm Zoe. I'm one of the campaign managers here at Virtual. And before I introduce today's present presenters, uh, I would like to quickly acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, which is the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And we pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. And I forgot to mention that's the land that Virtual is on. Uh, these webinars are a fantastic opportunity to learn so much more about the businesses on the platform and hear directly from the founders who are looking to raise capital. And today I'm joined by Dan and Sarah from Board Sox, and they're going to give a presentation and take us through their business and this investment opportunity for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll throw over to a Q&A session. Um, some of you may have already been to a few virtual webinars, but you'll know that there's a Q&A box where you can submit your questions through and I'll ask those to the founders after they've given their presentation. So please be sure to put all your questions through there and we'll try and get through all of them in this session. Um, also, if you need to jump off early, we are recording today's session too and we'll make it available afterwards. Uh, just very quickly, I'd like to go over Virtual's role in this whole process. So Virtual allows people to invest in early stage companies like never before. And investors purchase ordinary shares and should consider their investment as a medium to long term investment because we are working with a lot of early stage companies who are looking to grow. Um, as a CSF platform also, CSF being crowdsource funding, um, we act as a gatekeeper to ensure that all the investment opportunities on the platform are also compliant with ASIC laws. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to once again introduce Dan and Sarah, and they're going to give us a presentation on the company and the upcoming investment opportunity. Hey guys, um, thanks very much for joining us today. I um, just wanted to say a big thank you for everyone taking time out of their busy schedules. I know everyone's got a lot on, so yeah, we feel really grateful that you've um, come on board and want to know a bit more about us and about our journey. So um, I'll just quickly kick over to Sarah so she can have a welcome to country. Sorry, Zoe, I didn't know we're doubling up, but um, yeah, very appropriate. Yeah, um, so I just want to welcome everyone and also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, wherever you may be. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of places so I can't list all of them, but um, we just want to pay our respects to their elders past and present. And I extend the, the, that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. Cool. So yeah, about board socks, um, we're a family owned um, surfboard accessory and cover business. Um, we started way back in 2018 by my sister, Sarah and myself. Um, we're, we're both two self-confessed surfing addicts. Um, there's a little photo of us growing up um, and then that's how we are today. So a little bit's <laughs> changed, not too much though. Um, yeah, a little bit about our journey and how we started this was um, Sarah's um, 17 years older than me, so there's quite a big age gap and growing up in Victoria, it's pretty cold and, and rough down there. So she struggled to get girlfriends to come along surfing with her. She used to drag a little brother, so I'd always used to go down and, and help her um, surf down the coast. Um, and really our love grew from there. So um, when, when we got a little bit older and we were looking for really quality products um, that really stood out, we were really disheartened by the, the lack of um, imaginative surfboard covers on the market. Um, when we first kind of looked into this, pretty much all covers were either black or, um, you know, silver in the travel um, industry. And none of them really had a thought for design or functionality, sustainability. So we looked into it ourselves. Um, so about us, yeah, we've got some, a pretty good complementary mix of skills. Um, Sarah's been a serial entrepreneur, having started and scaled multiple other businesses. She has a bachelor's degree in marketing, retail management, uh, master's degree in graphic design. She's currently running her own business as an e-commerce business coach. She specializes in digital marketing, Facebook ads, and email marketing. Um, myself, I finished a bachelor's degree of arts at Monash University. I went surfing for many years, just traveling the world. Um, since coming back, I've kind of dove into the, the surf industry, working as a surf coach, running a surf school, and um, get to meet some really good up-and-coming talent in the industry. Uh, so we've earned a reputation um, for providing eco-conscious surfers with innovative solutions. 
Um, today, Board Sox proudly boasts a thriving community of over 5,000 customers, all enthusiastic about their surfboard protection while actively contributing to the future of the surfing industry. Um, reputation is everything for us. Um, I actually handle customer service at Board Sox. I like to treat everyone like, like my best mate. So I want the best result for them. Um, you can tell that by our 500 five plus star reviews. Um, and yeah, you've probably heard me if you've signed up to this EOI, emailing you, calling you, just trying to get in touch and say day and just tell you a bit about our story. Um, so I'm gonna talk about our traction to date um, with the brand. Um, over the past 12 months, um, we've achieved an impressive growth rate of 52% on last year, which is um, pretty exciting given, you know, some of the tougher economic times that some of us are facing. While our primary, while our primary business channel is e-commerce, we've also established approximately 30 wholesale partnerships across Australia, which is um, exciting and there's lots of room for growth in that area. Um, we've served over 5,000 plus customers and we've sold over 10,000 products uh, we also have six uh, recycled material product lines within our mix, and we've donated over $10,000 with our charity um, partnerships, which is really exciting. I'm just going to go through a little bit of a timeline of, um, you know, where we started and where we are now. So we started in 2018. Um, Dan actually decided to go on a six-month surf trip when we launched, um, so he swanned off over the world. Uh, I was, uh, I was that content with creating. <laughs> content creating he had a few board meetings um and then we sort of uh we launched our first uh charity bag in 2019 which has been one of our best sellers actually um with saltwater dream time and we give back to jeruki surf so that's the product there in 2021 we were featured as metas australia's small business of the year which is really exciting um 2022 we released our range of surf, surf accessories and 2023 has been a really big year for us. We opened the, our um, showroom and our warehouse here in Torquay, which is where I am. Um, we were finalists in the uh, Surf Accessory of the Year with the Seba Awards. We didn't quite win, but we were pretty honoured to be in the ring with some big brands like Creatures and Rip Curl, et cetera. So that was um, pretty exciting for us. Um, we were named as one of the top 10 leaders to watch in 2023 by Inside Small Business and we won the um, Inside Small Business Top 10 Business Leaders. We also released our first recycled plastic, um, sorry, re recycled plastic bottle surfboard bag, which, um, and our new range, which has been really exciting this year. So this is Dan and I on the front cover. We're pretty excited to um, make the front cover. And I suppose our achievements stem from our dedication to innovation and sustainability and has earned us recognition, as I've just mentioned, being named top 10 founders to watch on the front cover of Inside Small Business. And we've also been featured in um, prominent shows like Netflix, Series 1 and Series 2. We're the only surf brand to have our products featured on that show. Uh, we made the front page of news.com this year and our products have been tried and tested by renowned surfers such as Nathan Florence, Tom Carroll and Nikki Van Dyke. Uh, this is just some of the spread of um, our PR. We've been really um, pushing PR this year and forming relationships with PR um, so we can sort of spread our message more out to a bigger community and also grow our own community of customers as well through different channels. So this is just a bit of a spread of where we've been seen this year. So it's been pretty exciting. Um, and I'll just hand over to Dan to yeah. talk about our charity partnerships. Um, charity partnerships. So this was kind of a cornerstone of our business. Um, collaborating with artists and charities to form that connection has allowed us really to um, spread our message out in the surf community. So our first um, collaboration was with that man on screen, Saltwater Dreamtime. Zach Bennett is a legend um, from Wollongong area. Um, and ten percent of that cover goes to Jeruki Surf Organisation and Nauru Surf Organisation. They help Indigenous kids um, get into surfing or further their surfing ability up in the Northern Rivers. Um, that's been our most popular cover um, by quite a long way. So obviously, really resonated with the surfing community. Um, the other ones were with our famous free surfer Aussie Wright, um, the Alien Head cover. Got to go up there and make a really funny video of dressing like an alien while he painted his board. Check that one out. Um, and then also Surfers for Climate. So um, the Surfers for Climate one uh, is with an artist called Jake Ross. And um, yeah, that one's been really popular as well. 
Uh, something we're really proud about is all our products are designed in-house here in Torquay. Um, and then as well as being designed in Torquay, we actually make some of our products in Torquay or quite a significant percentage of our products get made. You can see Sarah there on the tool in tools in um in the warehouse in Torquay. So we make our surf slings, our wax bags, um, and all the, the board socks covers get um sewn and finished here in Torquay and distributed. So if you're in town and you want to drop in and get a custom free cover, you know where to find us. You can drop in for a coffee and a surf movie as well. So this year we moved into our um, showroom warehouse space. We're actually sharing the warehouse space with another small business here in Torquay called Van Market. Um, and this is how it all started here on the left in my shed. Um, pretty squishy. I'd say my uh, organisational skills were next level there of how much I actually fitted in that shed and was able to make it a working space. But um, we did it and, you know, people would come over to pick up a cover and lift up this shed and they're like, oh, that's what's on behind there. But um, we got the opportunity to move in with the van market and share the space here. And I have to say, Dan from the van market was just integral in getting this space organised um, and being what it is right now. So we very much um, respect and thank the relationship we have with him. Um, and, you know, we sort of went from our very, you know, tight quarters with um, storage units and the shed now to a beautiful space where we can have our customers come and meet us and, um, you know, engage with us and talk to us about what's important in surfing and, you know, spreading our message further and, and our products and what they mean further. So we're at four of eight Sawmills Way. You can find the directions on the website. So if you are in Torquay, we'd love to see you. We've got a coffee machine. We've got drinks in the fridge even. Um, you know, sit down, have a chat, watch a surf movie with us. So it was very much about a space of bringing our customers in and bringing you into our lounge room, essentially. Um, yeah, so... Cool. The zipperless yep. travel bag. Um, so, yeah, something we're really excited about. I know every surfer has had this experience of um, going to go on their once-a-year trip over to Indonesia or overseas and you're really excited. And, you know, the night before you run to get your, your travel bag and you go to open it and the zip sees um, through salt and rust corrosion. Like I know I've probably had this happen to me probably five times. Um, it's a real bummer because obviously the travel bag itself is okay, but just that one mechanism on the bag leads to a bag that probably has five or 10 years more of shelf life being thrown into landfill. So it's a problem that we really wanted to address um, and we got to work with a local product designer from the Central Coast, Liam Gibson. He's been really amazing to work with. Um, he's designed this travel bag. Um, as you can tell, it's got a clip mechanism and it's got a, a bit of a unique closing um, mechanism as well. Um, we can talk about that a bit later, but that um, does have design registration on it and we're ready to really bring that into market this year and get it out to as many surf shops and as many people as possible because we know it solves a really big pain point that every surfer has had. Like I've talked to hundreds of people in the last week um, on the, for the expression of interest and everyone can resonate with, with having that issue. The surfing industry, growth of the surfing industry, sorry. Um, yeah, so the, the, the consumer demand for grassroots brands um, Another advantage we have is um, stemming from the monopolization of the surf industry. Um, at the moment, consumers have a preference for going back to grassroots and independent surf brands. Um, we're a family owned business. Uh, it's me and my sister. My mum helps out cutting and sewing sometimes. And then just a few local people kind of chopping and changing um, around from the community. So we're really grassroots at the moment, but we've got big hopes to kind of um, keep growing. A um, little bit of information about the surf industry. So Australia boasts a staggering 2.5 million surfers. Um, globally in 2018, there were 35 million active surfers, a number projected to reach 50 million by 2024. That number is going to increase even more with the likes of um, the Olympics, surfing being in the Olympics, also um, wave pools reaching people in um, inland communities that otherwise wouldn't have access to surfing. And also things like surf, the growing number of surf schools, speeding up people's um, accessibility to learn how to surf. Um, the surfboard market is expected to exhibit a compound annual growth rate of 5% from 2021 to 2018. That definitely got a huge spike with um, COVID as well. Um, with increased surfboard sales, it's only natural that surfboard covers will follow suit. 
Um, the surfing equipment market is estimated to reach a value of 6.46 billion by 2024. So some pretty big numbers. Um, our exciting growth opportunity. So um, our growth opportunity is launching out our zipless bag to market. There's currently nothing like that on the Australian market. Um, and we know that it solves a huge pain point. So we're really excited by that. Um, so far, expand nationally with sales reps. Um, so far, I've been doing all the wholesale um, game, which is good, but I know there's some more experienced sales reps out there that I've already been in contact with that can really help us um, bolster our wholesale game. Um, currently, I think we're in 30 stores across Australia. Um, I think between surf, snow, skate and water sports, there's about 1,300 shops in Australia. So there's a lot bigger of a market that we can really crack into. And that's without even talking about expanding internationally into, into countries that would really suit our products. Um, USA comes to mind, Japan, um, Europe, um, and then obviously grow our talent of team riders. So we're really grateful to really have some, some great team riders at the moment, but um, with some extra resources, we'll be reaching out to those bigger names and, and trying to bring them into our circles as well. Okay. So yeah, our strategic focus involves scaling our operations. So with more capital, we can, we can purchase more stock and reduce the price per unit, um, both increasing our margins and profitability, and also maybe um, allowing us to change pricing structure to be more competitive with other um, competitors. Um, we've got exciting plans to extend our product range um, and accessories lines. So you can see there, we've got surf slings, which are being really popular, funky surf hats with different patterns that have been super popular. Um, change mats, uh, wax and beach bags. Um, and we're going to restock our flagship board socks covers with some fresh new designs from artists. So um, I'm just going to talk about growing our team. So at the moment, it's been Dan and I running the show for the last six years. But with increased funding, um, it'll allow both Dan and I to focus our collective strengths on actually increasing board stocks revenue, profit and scalability. Um, we really want to ex um, expand our support team so Dan and I can focus on our strengths. And then one of the other things is to um, bring on a marketing and content creation specialist um, hired on a part-time basis. You know, getting content and creating content is probably one of the biggest, biggest challenges we have um, in running a surf brand. So that's a pretty exciting opportunity for us. Um, one of the reasons why we wanted to do the equity crowdfunding through virtual is that we want to expand our community. And that means allowing our customers to own a share in our, in our business and in our growth, which is really exciting. We really want to be a brand for surfers owned by surfers. And we also wanted to incorporate people with surf and business expertise to join us on this exciting journey. Um, yeah, so we're really um, excited to have you here today and um, invite you to invest in the next chapter of Board Socks. But, um, you know, and just thank you for taking the time today to allow us to share our vision in growing our brand. And um, till we meet again, we'll see you at the back, hopefully, in the ways. Um, yeah, I'll just add to that. Yeah, sorry, Dan. Yeah, sorry, Dan. Yeah. I was going to say, oh, thank you, everyone, that I've spoken to um, on the phone in the last couple of weeks as well. Um, just the kind of the support we've got, it's pretty overwhelming for for a brand like us. And um, yeah, we're really excited to, to move on. Yep. And also just don't forget if you are in Torquay, please pop in and say hi because um, our community means everything to us and you guys coming in and saying hello and having a cup and a drink is, is really what Dan and I are passionate about. Yep. So if you have any questions, um, please email us at board so hello at boardsocks.com.au. But um, we'll hand over to Zoe to manage the Q&A. Yes, Thank if you. you have questions yep. now, please ask yeah, them yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, Sarah and Dan. That was really great. I always love learning more. You know, I work with these companies that raise on virtual for weeks in advance before we hold these Q&A sessions, but I always love learning a little bit more about the product and brands um, in these sessions. So we'll jump straight into the Q&As. Um, Dan and Sarah, I'm just going to throw them to you. We've got a few to get through, which is awesome. Um First one is from Michael. Um, Michael has asked, how protected is the zipperless bag from someone else copying you or the product rather or the idea and concept? 
Yeah, I think I'll take that one. Um, so it's got design registration on it. Um, I'm not a lawyer, um, but I do know kind of, it means that no one can copy the exact design that we've come up with. Um, so like I said, there's more to come out about what that actually is, like with the unique folding mechanism. Um, these bags, zipperless bags do exist um, overseas. Um, there's a few in, in other countries, but no one's really, um, no one's really kind of ex excelled at explaining the environmental benefits and, and kind of merging that with their brand. Um, so we still think it's a really big opportunity um, and there is uh, protection on the, the specific design that we do have. Cool. Thanks. And um, you're probably going to share a little bit more about all that in your offer document, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, Joanne has said, first of all, great products. So got a fan. Um, Joanne, Thanks, Joanne. Asked, what do we get out of our investment? And I can answer this one just because I'm on the virtual side. Um, but Joanne, first of all, you know, you become an investor in a business that you obviously admire. Um, crowdsource funding is a little bit of a different operation from what you may traditionally know about investing or how you have invested in the past. So because these are uh, really early stage businesses, their main focus and goal is profitability. Um, companies may have a clause in the documents that are available when the investment offer opens about how they might like to reinvest dividends back to their investors. Um, but usually the profits that they make will go back into growing the company. Uh, you can learn more about this when the offer opens a week after next, because there will be information about what the company and the founders plan to do with um, profits made. Uh, also, as mentioned in the presentation, a big part of becoming an early stage investor is the idea that these companies will grow exponentially and one day they might look to sell their company, um, you know, find a major acquisition uh, or, you know, just become exceptionally profitable, which they will, you know, return um, dividends back into Back to Can I jump in there, Zoe, as well? Um, you'll also be getting um, rewards through us as well. We're going to set up an investor um, incentivized um, structure. So you'll be getting discounts off products um, and some free products if you're kind of in the upper echelon. So as well as um, we're going to have investor nights um, at our showroom in Torquay. That's, that's on the cards as well. Cool. Thank you. And yeah, just uh, a few more examples is, you know, there could be a major share buyback in the company, um, which can benefit early stage investors, or, you know, there could be private equity investment in the company too, um, which could offer you the opportunity to exit. So yeah, please head to the virtual website, learn a little bit more about what crowdsource funding investments are like, um, so that you can be comfortable with what you're going to do going forward. Uh, Jason has asked how many staff are employed in the business. And I know you covered this off in your presentation, but. Um... Yeah, I, I can talk to that one. So at the moment, it's just Dan and I, and we have a part-time staff member that comes in and helps myself um, cut and sew. But yeah, it's mainly been Dan and I. I'm pretty proud of, you know, where we've brought the business in the surf industry and how well known our brand is, given that it is just the two of us. <laughs> So I think um, if we can expand our team, the the opportunities ahead for us are just, I see them as enormous. So I'm pretty excited by it. Yeah. yeah. And there's there's been some really important contractors as well. So Megan has done a lot of our designs. Yeah. Um, those artists, um, Zach, Ozzy, and Jake. Um, yeah. And then who am I missing? I feel like I'm missing someone. Oh, Liam with the, the zippless board bag design. Big shout out to Liam. Um and so our you've accountant. got some other people behind this. Yeah, Carolyn, our accountant, yeah, some accountant. people behind the scenes that you get to <laughs> yeah. help contract certain things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a lot like of contractors. Speech. Yeah, I think we've always tried mm -hmm. to run a business as a family business and we want to make people feel like they're part of the team and, you know, be part of the family. Um, but it, it is primarily Dan and I. So, yeah, and I think Dan and I have a very unique relationship. We get along like a house on fire, to be honest. We always have and... We have such separate skill sets that allow us to excel in the business, I think, too. So that's been a, a real um, strength of ours. Yeah. And yeah. passion. 
Yeah, given that he's also 17 years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good that. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, Mark has asked, and I'm not sure if these, I'm not sure what figures these were in relation to because there are a few um, in the Prezzo. Maybe it was in regards to the industry or maybe your personal figures. Um, but Mark was just wondering where the statistical numbers are coming from. So that could be, I'm not sure exactly what, but. Um, uh, yeah, it was just um, through, through a um, research paper I got online. I'd have to go and double check where it was from. Statistica, yep. I think it was called. Um, yeah. And obviously you've got your own e-commerce business, so that's where. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, yep. Some numbers would be coming from. Yep. Um, Mark, just to add to that, there is going to be a lot of information about the business. And I, sorry, everyone, I do become a little bit of a broken record in these sessions when I'm talking about the offer document and the offer opening. But the offer is when you can make your investment. Um, so yeah, there'll be documents available, which give you a lot more information about the business when the offer opens. So if you would like to explore more of the businesses figures or just learn more about the industry figures, um, the offer document will offer you the opportunity to do that. Um, Joanne again, big fan, um, has asked, how do you go against your competitors? Maybe it's also a good time to just chat about who your competitors may be. Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, so I guess we've been quite lucky that um, the niche that we've chosen with colourful um, surfboard covers, no one's really come after it that hard. Um, Preachers is one of our biggest com competitors. When we first launched, actually, no one really out of the big guys are doing canvas covers at all. Um, and, and that's one of the big kind of perks that people love about our covers is they're made from canvas. So they're a bit more durable and because they're canvas, you can screen print on them. So you've got the patterns. Um, Creatures it did go on to make a, um, a canvas cover maybe two or three years after we did. Um, so they're, they're one of our kind of biggest competitors. Um, but like I said, just because we've got so many different varieties of colorways and we're a bit more artistic than them, we're kind of sitting in, in a different niche. Like they don't really they're not as into the artistic creative side of things. I guess they're a bit more tech focused. Um, and then, yeah, there's a few companies like ocean and earth. Um, you know, they're some of the kind of bigger accessory companies in Australia. Um, but I think because mm -hmm. we're so we're small and we're quite adaptable, whenever we see a gap in the market, we've been acting on it. So for things like surf hats, um, there was no one really doing colorful surf hats and we saw that gap and straight away, you know, if it's a bigger company, there's 30, 40 people, 50 people involved to get that product off the ground is kind of difficult for us. We just saw that as another gap acted on it. And then we were kind of the first people to start doing really colorful, creative surf hats as well. Um, and the, you know, you kind of get a name for yourself as of people that are kind of doing that thing a little bit ahead. Um, mm -hmm. Surf slings is another example of that, that we were one of the first ones doing surf slings and, and colorful surf slings. And um, so, yeah, we're just kind of, because we're small, we're adaptable and, and we're able to kind of work in amongst the bigger players. Yeah. And I also want to add to that, that, um, you know, some of these products have been around, like our board socks covers have been around, but they've been in the homemade market. When we talk about we're the first to do it, we really want to talk about the first to commercialize it in the surf industries. We sort of took it, some of it from the homemade market into, you know, a larger scale operation whilst also being, you know, one of the first to do the creative covers that we do as well. But, um, yep. yeah, yeah. I also guess, uh, yeah, in the surfing community, word of mouth would be a huge factor as well, which is helping, you know. Oh, 100%. Getting you yep. there, mostly competitive. Yep. I think one thing Dan and I also pride ourselves is on the quality of the product and people only buy products when they're good. You know, people don't come back and buy again and again and again. And, you know, we have a really, our return customer rate is growing. As people get new surfboards, they add another board socks to their collection. So that's, you know, it's always nice <laughs> that we're pretty um, passionate about creating solid quality products is, you know, one of our core values in our business. Yeah. Yeah. My colleagues are tragic. He's, we joke about him buying a new surfboard every week. Um. Okay, and I apologize if I pronounce this name incorrectly. Maita, Maita, uh, 
Kata uh, has a few questions, so we'll just go through them one by one. Uh, first question is, how will you drive continue? And you may have already covered this in your presentation and in your answers so far, so we'll, we can um, yeah. go if you want. But how will you drive continuous innovation and protections of these innovations? First question. Um, I can answer some of these questions, Dan, yeah? Yeah, you go for I, it. Yeah, I suppose the continuous innovation is that Dan and I both surf, and we're passionate surfers. So we find solutions for things that we have problems with. So for example, when I thought of the canvas covers, it was using the polyester socks that I used to use and the, the wax would get stuck. They'd tear, they made a plastic. That was a problem that we I wanted to solve in the industry. Um, the other thing was, you know, I was sick of wearing guys hats in the surf because the sun gets so strong in my eyes that I wanted to design some hats that were, you know, colourful for girls and guys as well, but actually go into more creative. So everything for the continuous innovation and even with the um, zippless bag comes from our problem as surfers. Like we're walking the walk and talking the talk doing it. Um, Dan might be a little bit better than me surfing these days. Um, i say a lot. <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyway, a um, little joke. Yeah. But um, oh. it really comes from our, our own um, problems as being surfers. You know, and I think the protection of these innovations is that's just where maybe my expertise in e-commerce and business comes in. We protect stuff. You know, we have we have trademarks on our brands in Australia, New Zealand, um, Europe, USA, where our um, brand is registered. Um, and then we have the design registration on the New Zippolis bag. So, yeah, I yeah, suppose that I'll stops. Add to that. And mm. also just um, with the new Zippolis bag, like it was our first time working with a, with a product designer, Liam. Um, Liam's been really great. Um, we want to attract more talent like that to come and work with us. And with more funds that we get through virtual, it will allow us to bring ideas that we have to these people that, you know, are professional designing new products. So I guess it's a bit of a cycle um, in that way. Like the more that we get, the more that we can put into these things. And the more that we can solve these problems that Sarah was just talking about and find other ways to solve them and solve them better. So that's really exciting as well. Also with sustainability, always at the forefront of our mind in our business, yeah, which I think goes to the next question. Zoe, do you just want me to read these through? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, cool. What are our non-negotiables when it comes to business decisions that we should hold you accountable to? Um, it's a good one. I think... Um, Sustainability. Those, yeah, sustainability, um, giving back and protecting our, our ecosystem, the people that surf within our community is really important to us. And I think that's where we always want to hold our values um, too. Yeah, as, as surfers and ocean users, like we can't, yeah. we can't use the ocean every day and then disrespect it by doing other things. So, our, you know, we haven't been perfect, like for sure, and we, we, we can be better and we want to be better and we, and we continue to, to get better every time. But we're out there looking for solutions. Like we want to make things in the best possible way with the least harm that lasts the longest. So um, that sustainability and um, innovation will always be at the forefront of our minds. So you can definitely hold us accountable to that. Mm. And I think also our customers, we have to be accountable to them they're a major stakeholder. They're what keeps us going. That's what keeps this brand alive um, without our customers, you know, and we listen to our customers. You know, if there's negative feedback, we always say, well, what could we do better? You know, we didn't do this that way. We did this way. Like our, when we first launched our covers, um, we had the canvas closures and people used to, they don't close properly. Now, some of us didn't mind that because the air gets through, but then we innovated the second round of our canvas um, board socks bags with a new closing system. And a lot of that feedback comes from our customers, not just us. You know, it takes a community to build a brand, not just Dan and I. And I think that's what, you know, we hold ourselves accountable to our customers and what they have to say. Yeah. Is there anything else, Dan, that you hold each other? I think Dan and I respect each other a lot. We try not to fight. <laughs> <laughs> try not to. Oh, <laughs> next question. <laughs> yeah, next question. Um, how, how will we scale support growth? Um, I suppose one thing we're proud of is that, you know, Dan and I have done it um, slowly and we've built our foundations really strong in the last six years. And I think that we're really ready to, we're at a position now where we're really ready to grow. We've got everything solid and strong in our business model. 
that I don't think too much can can sway it to be honest like we've really built our brand we've built our um uh, supply channels really well we have really great relationships with our um, manufacturers like they're the best ever um we've got really great customers I think we've just built all our foundations so hopefully in this next scale of growth we won't be we don't want to be shaky like we've done that on purpose um yeah and just be smart with it too I hope that answers that question what's the risk what, what question were you on this there sorry how will we scale support our growth oh, okay yeah, and I think we touched on some of those questions too in the presentation by bringing on some experts in certain areas to help us in growing our business. Uh, what's the what's the riskiest operational cost line? Something out of your control that could risk the business growth? Definitely the economy. That's one of them okay. at the moment. Yes. Um, uh, discretionary spending is at an all-time low because the interest rates are up. But I think with the... Um, surfing industry is that people have purchased more boards than ever over COVID and people are surfing. So, you know, we've had a 52% increase on sales on last year. So people are mm. going out and buying more products and, you know, even being sun smart, like the, the rate of hats that we sell is crazy at the moment because everyone's getting on board with buying more hats in the surf and protecting their face and things like that. So I think the riskiest thing is probably just the economy or something happening happening with manufacturing or yeah I can't really think of too much to be honest yeah that one. Dan can you think of anything yeah well everything's a risk at the end of the day like risk, walking, yeah. walking outside and getting hit by a car or surfing the ocean get hit by a shark they're all risks but as long as yeah. you try and control them I think surfing's obviously you've seen from the the statistics in in that presentation like surfing's in good shape um, people are getting more into surfing and more into outdoor activities, especially after COVID, you know, everyone was just cramped up, um, you know, and now on the other side of COVID people are spending a little bit um, less money on, you know, possessions and things and they're doing activities. So they're immersing themselves in those, um, you know, physical activities and experiences and, and surfing really ties into that because it is one of those things that a lot of people have discovered their passion for over COVID. So I think we're in a pretty good spot. Um, yeah, just we're obviously just focusing on what you can do and try to control for the risks as possible. But at the end of the day, risks are they're always present. Mm. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then just a side note, Mita, Mita, sorry again. Uh, just mentioned that if you are looking for people to fill some roles, um, they can refer people to you. So, um, Mita, the contact details are there on the sides hello at board sock so if you'd like to get in touch with dan and sarah you're more than welcome to yep thanks for the can questions we, uh, close jason has asked uh what is your export forecast growth in the next 12 months and i'll take this one uh jason because uh with virtual, um, we're governed by ASIC, as mentioned previously, and ASIC takes a pretty firm view on future projections, whether that be product, revenue, um, or, you know, return on investment. And as a lot of ventures that do come on to virtual are early stage, they don't have huge trading histories, and it can be considered misleading information to be offering our projections, even for the next 12 months. Um and it could also be considered speculative for the future investor. So we don't offer information about expected growth or, you know, forecasting, but you do get access to a lot of the business's details and numbers in the present, um, which can help you with making a decision about whether you would like to go ahead and invest. And just on top of that, um, you know, while uh, what investors receive is the offer document with the last 12 months of financial statements to see what the company is in and their revenue, customer base, sales data, um, you know, and risks are also included. So you're welcome to peruse those documents and get further information about the company's business stats today, but we can't offer information on future projections, I'm afraid. But as mentioned, you know, the company's growing, the industry's growing. Um, so, you know, I'm sure there is an expected growth to come. But we can't offer those specifics, I'm afraid. Sorry. Thanks for the question, Jason. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Next one. Next one. Uh, I've got to do a little bit of catching up here. Um, 
Leo has said, uh, I've got to leave the call. Um, okay, so Leo's got some questions and they had to leave. So it would be good if you can get in touch with Leo after this session and no. his details. Um, I'll, add to, I'll add him to the list of 100 people I'm going to call. No worries. Um, so Leo has also asked what the size of investment sort is. I can answer that uh, for the rest of the group. Um, we are in the expression of interest stage right now, and we still have over a week to go before the company opens <laughs> So we're gathering information and we're figuring out how many people want to invest and how much they might want to invest. So we're still landing on the final numbers. And once again, that information is going to be available when the offer opens. Um, you know, one of the best things about expressing interest is that you do get to become one of the first people that has access to this information and you get to become an early investor in the company, which is exciting. Um Leo has also asked, will small investors be considered? Absolutely. One of the perks of crowdsource funding is to democratize investments, investing in the companies you really like. And you can invest in board socks or for as little as $250, or it might even be less or more. Um, once again, the numbers are still being landed on, but small investors are certainly considered and encouraged. And that is what makes up such a big bulk of these funding figures we do see on the platform, the small investors who are passionate about the brands. Um, sorry, Leo's put some dot points here. Supply chain, uh, who sources slash integrated or not, aspirations to integrate. I'm a little bit confused about this. I think maybe. <laughs> cool, sorry. I'll call him. I'll call him. All right. And we'll try and circulate <laughs> we can, information. We can work that yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Sorry, Leo. For that, that paragraph later. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Leo. Thank you, James. This is a good question we haven't considered. Um, do you, you know, do you have any athletes or sponsorships that you might consider in the future? Yeah, absolutely. I'll take that one as I handle the the team riders. Um, we do have athletes who've probably got about 10 team riders, um, some competitive surfers from local areas. Um, we have Ben Considine, who's on the World um, Surf League Longboarding Championship. Um, he's a local Torquay guy, so very proud of Ben and what he's been able to achieve. Um, and then, yeah, we've kind of got people all across Australia um, that are in different areas to kind of represent us. And we're not just looking for great surfers. We're looking for great role models. We're looking for people that are passionate about the environment. Um, they're passionate about surfing and they're passionate about, you know, doing good for others and being a good human. So definitely with increased funding, um, we'll be able to probably attract some more top tier talent. I've already got a lot of people in mind. Um and yeah, I've kind of, I've been in chats with a few people. So that's, that's going to be an exciting part of the next step and stage of our growth. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, James has asked, uh, do you have a plan around scaling up production volume without sacrificing quality? Yeah, I can probably answer that. We've got a really amazing relationship with our manufacturer and have for the last five years, the quality that they um, produce I feel is second to none and um, we can want to continue working with them. So quality is of our utmost importance in producing products and that's something that will always um, hold high. So, yeah, it's just a non-negotiable really. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a great manufacturer who helps us along with that. I think bringing, you know, product designers and, you know, I have a background in graphic design and we've done a lot of it ourselves, but um, bringing people in like Liam who has um, expert um, knowledge in, you know, further different types of products and materials will help us along the way in bringing out new and exciting, innovative and sustainable products. So, yep, I hope that answers I, that I don't think, just to add to that, I don't think we'll have to sacrifice quality with increasing yeah. production. I think we'll be able to increase production and keep the same quality with our manufacturers. We're very lucky. Yeah, actually in, increase that quality at the same time as increasing, you know, numbers. So that's what our plan is, Yeah. Yeah, we want to make things bigger and better at every stage in our journey. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. 
Uh, someone called Amanda Birchall, which is, I'm not sure if that's a coincidence or not, <laughs> just said, love this and thank you. Might be interested in more info about the part-time support roles. Um, have to get back to work now. Sorry. So Amanda, if you want to get in touch, um, there's the email there or otherwise Dan can try and do so <laughs> amongst the list of 100 people. Put her on my list. Yep. Great, great last name as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Daryl has asked, what level of capital are you seeking and what is the current sales and EBIT? Um, Daryl, just for your awareness, um, and once again, we are still in the expression of interest stage. So we're gathering information about investor interest and also what the raise figures might be. So that includes a minimum and a maximum target. Um, you know, once again, the full terms of the offer, which includes this raise figure, will be available when we open the offer. So please be sure to express interest so you can be the first to jump in and find out and look at all the other terms of the offer as well. Um Current sales and EBITDA, uh, Dan and Sarah, did you want to talk about that or did you want to leave that for information just to be included in the offer document as well? Um, That's all be included in the offer document. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Jason has asked, what are your costs per unit for the zipperless bag and what do they sell for? That's two to be confirmed um it, yeah. how much we order how much we order is going to depend upon the virtual we raise, raise itself um we've obviously we've got some figures and estimations at the moment but there's not really much point sharing them because it's going to change um depending upon how much funding we raise um and how much we sell them for that's yeah cool. pbc as well i guess so no worries. Yeah. And once again, in the offer document that we're talking so much about, there is a section called general use of funds. So you can learn what the company's plans would be um, if they raise their minimum target and if they reach their maximum target. So you can learn more about what the general business plans would be um, in both situations if you would like to look at the offer document when it's available. Uh, Jason has also asked, what is the current financial status and growth trajectory? trajectory um jason once again we can't like offer future projections or you know speculative trajectory information um but once you know dan and sarah have talked about their business's growth and the growth of the industry so that's pretty important information to make an assumption about how the business may grow um current financial status once again, the last 12 month, months of financial information will be available in the offer. <laughs> so please be sure to have a look at that. And even when the offer opens, you'll be able to get in touch with the founders and ask them really specific questions about the details in the offer document too. All right, we don't have too much longer, so I'll try and get through these last few questions. There, um, there was one on... Um... Reference to B Corp. Can I answer that one, Zoe? Yeah. Uh, which one yeah. is was that Steve, from? Steve Early just asks about um, sustainability. Are you looking at B Corp or, yeah, we are looking at B Corp. I've started the process. Um, it's just a matter of time for us, Dan and I, having the time to do it. It's quite a big project. So with getting support, you know, depending how much we raise and getting support people on, then we can actually finalise that process. But um it should be a relatively easy process because we actually follow all the guidelines that B Corp puts out. It's just literally, a, it's a paper paper process of us doing the work to get it done. So I'm really excited to get that done, hopefully this year, or it's on the plan for this year. Um, but it's just getting the support team around us for me to finish that. So yeah, B Corp's up there. I just saw that and I thought I'd answer it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Sean asked, uh, how much does a $10,000, um, you know, what does a $10,000 investment get you and what returns are projected for this amount over the next few years? Broken record once again. We can't <laughs> talk about projections. Sorry, Sean. Um, you know, the whole point of this is so that the company can grow and expand. And, you know, many years later when it is profitable and has scaled significantly, um, early stage investors will find a way to either exit or be paid out or receive dividends. Um, what 10K 
investment gets you is the opportunity you know for a significant exit in the future um it also gets you a big number of shares i'm sure depending on the share price as well as investor rewards and you know the opportunity to be part of a company that you like and support so yeah please have a look at the terms of the offer as well um so you can learn more about what a 10k investment would get you and how many what the number of shares you can buy is as well um Ben said, thanks for your time, Sarah and Dan. Speak soon. I think a few people are dropping off just because they've joined during their lunch break. So we'll wrap this up. Yeah. There's uh, just one more question from Rohit, I think, um, that we hadn't answered. Yeah, and Steve is asking. Oh, no, Steve, yeah. you're not already covered. Steve's last. Yeah, no, so um, do you have a CFO as someone who's purely on financial aspect of the business? Do you, you can focus what you're both good at? Um, it's something that Dan and I want to bring into the business um, is someone to help us with projections and all that kind of stuff. I do most of it for the business and, um, you know, we've got this far with it, but as the business grows, we do want to bring on that support um, team to help support us. So, you know, I suppose my strengths are marketing and Dan's are um, relationships, you know, relationships <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the water surfing <laughs> as much as you can. I'm joking. Um, but he is very good at building the relationships with the brand and I think it's an important part of the business. Um, it's got us where we have got to. So I think that's down in our strengths and bringing people on to support our strengths and also allow us to be more creative in the brand and have bigger visions for it as well. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. How yeah, that are that we going to tackle future growth constraints financially? Being, will you be having more capital injection rounds Um we're just going to see how, how this round of virtual goes. Um, mm. There's obviously no crystal ball for these things, but, you know, um, if we need to get more capital, um, hopefully we don't, um, then we'll be looking at things like loans or, you know, more more rounds of virtual. But the plan is um, just, to, just to see how we go after this round. And, um, mm. yeah, hopefully, hopefully we won't need any extra funding. I suppose the good thing about our business... So I, I'm not sure if I can mention this, but, you know, we don't have any debts and we don't have any loans at the moment and we've come this far. We don't have one big bit of single debt apart from, you know, Dan and I having a few um, director's loans, but we've been very strategic in that decision-making and not getting into those situations where we're doing this out of desperation. We're actually doing this out of a need and a want to grow the business sustainably um, with our customers on board with us in the next journey. So I think that's something that Dan and I are both pretty proud of in the last six years. You know, a lot of businesses take big loans out and things like that. We've grown the business and put everything that we have had back into it, now ready with the foundations as strong as they possibly can be for a really exciting stage of growth. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's okay. Cool. Thanks, Rowie. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great. Well, thank you everyone for attending. We will wrap it up from here. Um, there's just a note from Sean saying that he would love to have a chat with you offline and he's left his number. So Sean, we can to the list. definitely get Dan. <laughs> Thanks, to get Sean. 103. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for joining today and hearing from Sarah and Dan about, you know, from their presentation and it was really insightful and enjoyable just to hear from all of you. Um, as mentioned before, a recording of this video will be sent around for everyone who registered just in case you missed out. Um, and the Expression of Interest campaign is live for over another week. So I really encourage you to jump in there, make your expression of interest and be on the list so that you're one of the first people who can invest in the company. Also, BoardSox has what we call a company profile. So you can already go and read a little bit of information about the company and watch their pitch video on virtual so far as well. Um, the early access period for this campaign is set to launch on Tuesday, 14 of November. So please mark that in your calendar. And as mentioned before, all the terms of the offer and really important information about the business will be available in the offer document when we open up on the 14th of November. Um, once again, thanks for your time. You're able to contact the founders throughout this period and even during the offer to talk about your interests in their company. And we'll see you all later. Thanks. Thanks, thanks so much, sorry. guys. Really appreciate thanks, being guys. here. Thanks. See you. Bye. Bye. Ciao.